Hallelujah. Let's take our seat. Tonight we are going to get into the word of the Lord. And God, I believe, I know, has prepared a servant to bring the word of God tonight. Tonight, I want you to be ready and I want you to be alert. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I want you to expect to be blessed tonight in Jesus' precious name because the man of God that is going to bring the word to us tonight, as we all know, very passionate teacher of the word and very anointed teacher of the word. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I know as the word of God comes forth from his mouth, it will turn my life and your life around in Jesus' precious name. I want you to join with me with the joy of the Holy Ghost as we bring Pastor Peter up to the pulpit. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody who is set for an encounter tonight, why not lift your hands and ask God, Lord, let there be a visitation for me tonight. Lord, visit me tonight via your word. The Bible said, and the Lord appeared again at Shiloh. The Lord appeared to Samuel by his word. Lord, as your word comes tonight, Lord, let there be an encounter for me. Lord, appear again tonight by your word. Lord, I need an encounter tonight. I need an encounter tonight by your word. Let there be a visitation that will change my story. Let there be a turnaround in my story tonight by your word in the precious name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we bless your name once again tonight for this awesome privilege to learn from you. Lord, for this awesome privilege to drink of the word of life. Lord, we decree as your word goes forth tonight. Lord, let no one live here without an encounter in the precious name of Jesus. Please, you may be seated. I want to appreciate God and his servant for this awesome privilege to stand upon this exalted altar to bring the word of life. Hallelujah. Tonight, we'll be looking at the characteristics of the disobedient. What are the markers for disobedience? How do we identify disobedient people? What is their behavior? Now, we will take an interesting story in the Bible. The fall of a giant. A man anointed by God. A man chosen by God himself. To lead his people. The man called Saul. Anointed by God, handpicked by God, chosen by God to lead his people. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 35, it baffles me the statement that God made in that place. And Samuel went no more to Saul, to see Saul, until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord regretted Mm, that he has made Saul king over Israel. God, the Almighty, the omniscient God, regretted that he had made a man a king over his people. That statement shook me to my foundation. God regretted that he has picked a man. Did God make mistake? The all-knowing God, did he make mistake to pick a man by himself? There was no campaign. There was no election. God ordered Samuel, go and anoint Saul, a king over my people. And at the long run, the Bible said that God regretted. Now, the time in which we have found ourselves is a very sensitive era in our generation. What God is calling Every one of his children today is alignment. Alignment to obedience. Alignment to his word. The extent to which we align ourselves to the word of God is what is going to determine our safety. Please, we need to get past religion and get real with God. Please get past self-deception. And get real with God. If you are serious, you want to serve him, get real with him. 
in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, he said, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked that whatever a man sows, that he will eventually reap. You can succeed in deceiving every other person, but if you can't deceive the one that matters, then there is no need. Praise God. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 28, Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, he said, Why the earth remains is seed time and harvest. What you sow is what you reap. So above the prayer we pray, above the fasting we embark on, above the hyperventilation of our souls in prayer, one thing God is calling is alignment with his commandment. Alignment to obedience. Giving ourselves totally to obeying his dictates. We need to pray that God will help all of us to align with obedience. Now, that story is a story you know very well. How Saul rose up and how he failed. God gave this man called King Saul a clear court instruction. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 15 from verse 1, God gave him there were no ambiguity in the instruction that God gave him. Everything was laid out clear court instruction on what to do. On what to do. And then he left. He actually embarked on obedience. But along the line, he became selective obedience. He became pick and choose. He did not align himself to completely execute the mandate that God has given to him. Now, what are the characteristics that we can see in people that are disobedient. Number one, from this scripture, everything I will be highlighting tonight will be from this scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 15, from verse 1 to 35, which is the end. They are unwilling to obey God, unwillingness to obey God, unwillingness to align with the commandments of God. This is number one characteristic. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 9, But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatling, the lambs, and all that was good. And we are unwilling to utterly destroy them. They were unwilling. They spared what is good. But everything despised and worthless that they utterly destroyed. The instruction to them was destroy everything, both man and beast. But they destroy the things that are worthless, the things that are despised, but the things that we are good to them, they preserve. You see, many a time God gives you instruction on what to do. You heard him right, but there are things you couldn't do away with. It may be a habit that God is telling you, do away with this. But because you are still attracted to it, you keep it. Do away with smoking. Do away with drugs. Do away with whatever. But because it's still pleasing to you, the things that you still enjoy, the things that you still want, the things that still, you know, you still find pleasures in, you want to return them. You want to, but the instruction is do away. With it. Do away with this character. Do away with this. And they keep. They were unwilling to obey God. They don't have problem obeying God in things that doesn't matter. But in the things that really matters. In the things that will touch them. No. They are unwilling to obey God. Number two. Is that they, they lie about their disobedience. They lied about their disobedience. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 20. And Saul said to Samuel, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me. Did he actually obey? Did he actually obey? And he said, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back Agag, the king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekite. You see a man speaking from both sides of his mouth. I have utterly destroyed all the Amalekites. But you have the king 
Agag with you. What are you keeping that God wants you to do away with? What are you still retaining? He was lying about his disobedience. Samuel, I have done what the Lord has asked me to do. I have gone on the mission the Lord sent me. Every instruction that God has given me, I've carried it out. But that was a blatant lie. Because he didn't obey the instruction of God. And you must have heard our daddy here say that half obedient is equal to disobedience. That is what is obtainable in the realm of the spirit. Incomplete obedience. Selective obedience. Pick and choose. They lie. Clear cut instruction by the Lord. But they water it down. Just example, the Bible said that tithe is 10%. Some people are paying 3% of their earning. Some are paying 2 Incomplete obedience. And you ask them, they say, I'm a tighter. Incomplete obedience. Selective obedience. But the instruction is clear. We all read it in Malachi chapter 3. 10%. Bring ye all the tithe. Not part of the tithe. All of it. That there may be meat in my house. And then now prove me with this. Clear cut instruction. But they will lie about their obedience. Number three, they boast about their disobedience. Fragrantly, they boast about their disobedience. In First Samuel chapter 15, from verse 12 and 13, he says, So when Saul arose, when Samuel arose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul went to Camel. And indeed, set up a monument for himself. Ha! Huh. That is a man that should be hiding in shame. That is a man that should be repenting of what he has done. Of violating the order that was given to him by Shekinah. And then this man went to Camel to set a monument for himself. And he has gone around, passed by, and gone down to Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Saul and said to him, and, and Saul said to him, then Samuel went to Saul, and now Saul said to him, Blessed are the Lord, blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. He was boasting in his disobedience. Oh, man of God, I have done all that God asked me to do. Look at me. Can't you see me? I have done everything God has asked me to do. They boast in their disobedience. No repentance at all. They are not repentant. Number four. They blame others, other people and not themselves. They blame other people for their disobedience and not themselves. From verse 15 and 16, but Samuel said, what then is this bleating of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, they have brought them. They, they, they. You see where he was going? They, not me, they. They have brought them from the Amalekites. They, excluding me. They, but forget not that Saul was the leader. Of the people. He said, they brought them. For the people. For the people. Now, when did the leader become a follower? And the follower become the leader. He said, and the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God. Your God. We brought this thing so that we can. Don't you like sacrifices? We want to offer bond sacrifice to you are God. You are God. You are God. The people, not me. Because as for me, I have obeyed the instruction of the Lord. I have done marvelously in his sight. Every commandment he gave me, I have obeyed it. But you see, these people, these people, 
these people, they, they, they spared these walls. They blame others. But he was their leader. He was the one that the instruction was given. Why is your family scattered? It's my wife. Why is your marriage running? It's, it's my husband. They blame others. They never shine the light on themselves. They never beam the such light on themselves. It's somebody else. Why are you not a title? My salary is never enough. They have excuses. They blame conditions. You have to ask yourself, which instruction of God am I breaking? For whatever reason, that sounds congenial to you. You see, to Saul, this was a good reason. But when God gives a man instruction, he's only expecting complete compliance. But this, I don't know the reasons you have. They may sound very cogent to you. They may look very excusable. But I want to tell you, anything that makes you frown the instructions of God is something that is about to destroy you. Any excuse you may have, to disobey the commandment of God. To disobey the dealings of God in your life. To look down on the instruction that God gives you in your quiet time. The ones you read, when you read the Bible, the revelation that God gave you. It doesn't matter how good the excuse may look. Disobedience. Disobedience. You pay a very big price for it. Now, in verse 22, he said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices? Has the Lord great delight? That was a question that uh, Samuel asked him. Has the Lord great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in the voice of as in obeying the voice of the lord as in obeying the voice of the lord anytime you obey the word of the lord he delights greatly in you there is nothing that delights the heart of the father like obedience to know that a child of his is obedient is in alignment is in compliance with the instruction of the scriptures, with the things that he has, he has said to him or to her. He said, has the Lord great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices? Obedience to the instruction of God is what delights his heart. Is what delights his heart. In John chapter 2 verse 29, and he said, he who sent me is with me. That was Jesus. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do the things that pleases him. I always live in alignment with his will. He does not leave me alone. He that sent me is always around me. He's always approved of the things that I do. Why? Because I always make sure I align myself with him. With his will, with his instruction. In John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus said to them, he said, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. The will of the Father. That is my food, to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. It doesn't matter what else, but this one thing I have decided to do. Not my will, but his will. Not the things I like, but his will. Not the things that are palatable to me, but his will. Not the things that I delight in, but his will. His will. His will. His will. It doesn't matter what it costs me. It may not be very good to me, but his will. My food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That means I am a man under authority. I don't go on doing my own will. I submit myself to the authority of the Father. That is, this, that is how you know a kingdom man. He lives by the rules of the kingdom. 
He doesn't go doing by his own things. He's a man under authority. Because he has a kingdom that he, he is under a kingdom. So he takes dictates from the kingdom. Praise the Lord. He lives by the rules of the kingdom. Now, you see, many believers like God to be their savior, but not their Lord. These are two different things. And God wants to be your savior and your Lord. Lord means master, ruler, governor. Not just to save you, but he wants you to obey. To be in, to be in alignment. To be a kingdom personnel. Somebody who is under the authority of a kingdom. You see, the mandate of Jesus is to save all man from sins. That is savior. But until you bring yourself under the lordship, where you are bound by his will and not your will, where you die to your will, where you die to your will and pick up his own will, he said, my food is to do the will of him that sent me. Even after you have been saved, God expects you to submit yourself after salvation to the interests of the kingdom, to the rules of the kingdom. The kingdom you belong to have rules. It has constitution that governs it. And you become a good citizen of that kingdom. To enjoy the full benefits of that kingdom, you must be a good citizen of that kingdom. And that is a kingdom that is loaded with every goodies. Everything that makes for life and godliness. In Romans chapter 8, from verse 1 and 2, Apostle Paul was saying, he said, now there is no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Now there is no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Who do not walk. But we read, oh, no more condemnation. But that's not where the statement ends. He said, the people that will not be condemned are the people that are led by the Spirit. Those who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Therefore, if for those, there will be condemnation to those who are in Christ, but do not walk after the Spirit. That's Vasa. That do not walk after the Spirit. In John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus said, This is how I know that you love me. If you love me, keep my commandment. Keep my commandment. If you love me, keep my commandment. He said, it's not by singing, I love you, I love you, Lord. It's by obedience. Keep my commandment. That is a sign that you love me. That is how I know who love me. And then he who loves me will be loved by my father. And he said, I have not seen, nor ears heard, nor either has it entered into the heart of any man that things which God has prepared not for everybody, but for his lovers. For his lovers. Now, if you look at uh, First Samuel where we read, he says, rebellion, rebellion, rebellion puts a man in the class of witchcraft. Witchcraft. When you're a rebellion, rebellious person, when God looks at a rebellious person, he's seeing you as a witchcraft person. Somebody who is practicing witchcraft. Stubbornness puts a man in the class of idolatry. You may say, oh, I don't worship idol. But the Bible says, ah, stubbornness is as iniquity. And as idolatry. Stubbornness and rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. That is how God sees it. You may not be worshipping idols like your ancestors. But your rebellion to the instructions of God 
puts you in the same class with those that do. Now, in the realm of the spirit, you are protected, you are as protected or as vulnerable as the level of your obedience. You are as protected or as vulnerable to the same level of your obedience. Now, if you enter into battle with an agent of darkness that is very that is more obedient to Satan than you are to God, he will defeat you in battle. Because in the realm of the spirit, what matters is your obedience. Obed our authority in the realm of the spirit is assigned based on obedience. So the more submitted you are to God, the more authority from him you will. That is how it is in the realm of the, of the spirit. If you enter into battle with an agent of darkness that has totally yielded himself or herself to obey the devil, he will defeat you in battle. The person that when devil tells him, go and get ten heads, he goes straight away and gets ten heads. And you, when God tells you, do this thing, you have an excuse. If you enter into battle, the, that person commands more authority in the realm of the spirit than you. He will defeat you in battle. So in the realm of the spirit, authority is ranked by the level of obedience. So if we must be people that we walk in power, we must be people giving to total obedience. Total obedience. Jesus was speaking in John chapter 14 verse 30. He said that the prince of this world came to me and found nothing in me. That's why I'm free. That's why I have authority. That's why I do whatever. He can't find anything in me. You see, the devil means accuser. He goes about like a roaring lion. He's seeking for people. He's seeking for an occasion to devour. He said, but he came to me and found nothing. I have none of his property. I'm not living in disobedience, so he cannot pin anything on me. So you have to declare that this year is a year of zero tolerance to disobedience. Zero. Zero. The plans of God for the commission, the plans of God for our life, very, very, very huge. But obedience, obedience is the sequel with which you will harvest the promises of God this year. Obedience, complete obedience. Now let's look at the disadvantages of disobedience. Disadvantages. If you live in disobedience, you can't avenge disobedience. Number one, you can't avenge disobedience. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 6. He said, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity, to bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish, being ready to punish, being ready to punish. You see, all the things, bringing into captivity and all these things. He said, being ready to punish all disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled. You have no right to avenge disobedience if you are equally living in disobedience. You are only ready to avenge all disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled. When your own obedience is fulfilled. Why do you think that some people... Hmm, look at what happened. Okay, number two. You can't use the authority in his name. Disadvantage of disobedience. You can't use the authority in his name. Remember what happened in Acts chapter 19. The seven sons of Sceva. That they saw Jesus. They saw Paul. They saw how they cast out demons. And demons obeyed them. Demons obeyed them. They commanded evil spirits. And they came out. 
He said, now the Bible said, this, this, then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call on the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by the, by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. And the, de and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? It's not just only in calling the name Jesus. No, but there was something about them. The devil checked them out in the realm of the spirit. He checked their level of obedience. Which, with which authority are you commanding us to come out? The same authority you are not obeying, you want us, you want to use to command us. No, it doesn't work like that in the realm of the spirit. And they dealt with these guys. You see, there was no error in their grammar. Their English was correct. They spoke very well like Apostle Paul. But there was lack, something lacking. There was something they couldn't find about them in the realm of the spirit. When you give an order, there is something that demons are looking It's not anybody can shout the name of Jesus. You can shout it 200,000 times. But if there is nothing, there must be something about that name that is connected to you. You must be a person under the authority of that name. For that name to, to carry weight in your mouth, there must be something. You must be living under the authority for you to command. So you cannot avenge. You can't use the authority in the name of Jesus. And number three, disadvantage. You will be limited in the power of the Holy Spirit. You will be limited in the power of the Holy Spirit. There is a dimension of the Holy Ghost that cannot be given to you unless, unless you align yourself in total obedience. There is a dimension. Of, you see, we have, we have two types of the Holy Spirit that we receive. The spirit within and the spirit upon. The spirit within, the indwelling, is the one that is given for our sanctification, for our life in Christ, for us to model Christ. Then the one upon is the one for ministry. That is where we have power. That is the power, the authority we exercise. And there is a level, you can't, it can't be given, there is a dimension of that spirit upon with which we do signs and wonder, with which we command the supernatural that cannot be given to you unless you are lying to total obedience. Acts chapter 5, verse 32. He said, and we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. To those who obey him. Every believer has the spirit within. But not your level of obedience is what determines the spirit upon. That is the, 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 the infilling of the Holy Ghost. To those, not to everybody, but to those who obey him. He gave to those who obey him. Hallelujah. So there is a level of the oppression of the spirit that you cannot have if you are walking in disobedience. You want to be, we, want, we all want to be the people filled to the brim with the power of God, but not in disobedience. No. He said he gave to those who obey him. That is a dimension you cannot reach until you begin to walk in total obedience to God. In total obedience to God. And we need the power of the Holy Ghost more than ever before to survive now. Now, if there is anything you need, you need the Holy Ghost. If there is anything you need now, you don't, you don't need money. Now you need the Holy Ghost. Because a lot of things are being unfolded in this age. A lot of things are happening. If you are not being guided, if you are not being led by the Spirit, you will eventually fall victims of a lot of things. I tell people, whatever you are getting now, get the Holy Ghost. Pay any price to be, to be anointed. No matter what it will take you, pay that price to get the power of the Holy Ghost. You can't live in ignorance now. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. This is critical time. We are living in a critical moment. 
You cannot afford to live carelessly. You cannot afford to live without the power of God. You can't afford to move around like empty vessels. No. You need to be filled and galvanized with the power of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. I don't know where you are listening to me from. You see, Saul was anointed. But the nature of man is rebellious. The nature of man is rebellious. That is his nature. Man wants to rebel against anything. That is the nature of man. You see, as we are here now, maybe all of a sudden, daddy will declare now, say, let nobody come to this altar to pray again. Is that time that the spirit will move you to come here? You want to pray, but you have never come here before. That is the nature of man, rebellious in nature. That is, you have never come here, but immediately they say, let nobody come here to pray again. That is when something will move you to begin to come. That is the nature of man. No wonder David cried in Psalm 51. He said, oh, in, in, in sin, my mother conceived me. That's the nature of man. You cannot. You cannot walk in obedience if you don't know Jesus, the obedient, fulfilled power of God. So I'm calling on you, wherever you are. Maybe you have been struggling. You desire, you delight to obey God. You want to walk in obedience, but you see, every time you rise, it's difficult. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I'm inviting you right now. If you want to receive Jesus into your life, that is the starting point. He said, to them that received him, he gave the power to become. That is a power to become. You want to serve God, it's not on the energy of the flesh. So I'm calling on you. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to say, Jesus, I need you to come into my life. I'm surrendering unto you. I have tried, I have tried on the energy of the flesh, but I see I'm getting nowhere. Jesus, I want you into my life. Come and help me. I want you to declare this prayer after me. Dear God, I know I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son and I believe that he died for my sins and that he, you raised him back to life on the third day. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. From this day forward, I forsake my sins and I am born again. If you made this prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. Wherever you are now, I can assure you that the power of God has moved into your life. The power of God has moved in. That power to become a son and a daughter of God has moved into your life right now. So if you made that prayer, we want you to text Yes Jesus to this email, echurch at dominionlife.org. The word Yes Jesus to the email, echurch at dominionlife.org. Or to the number 925-364-1745. Hallelujah. We are going to pray this night. First Samuel chapter 15 verse 35. And Samuel went no more to Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord regretted that he has made God, he has made Saul king over Israel. Mm. Brethren, will God regret over your life? No. Will God regret that he has kept you? Will God regret that he has promoted you? We God regret that he has lifted you up. We God regret that he has blessed you with a family. We God regret that he has given you a good job. We God regret that he has preserved your life all throughout this pandemic. Hema told uh, uh, Mordecai told Esther, maybe you have come to the kingdom such a time like this. We God regret over your life. No, I don't want God to regret over my life. That is why I must ask for grace to obey him. For grace to obey him. I want us to lift our voices tonight. God, I need grace for total obedience. Grace for complete obedience. Not for selective obedience. Lord, grace. I need grace. I need grace. That's it for grace. For total obedience. 
grace for complete obedience. Lord, I won't engage in selective obedience. No, grace to completely obey you, to yield myself completely to your instructions, to carry out the things that you have asked me. Oh, Lord, you won't regret over my life. Lord, I need grace. Lord, I need grace tonight. I need grace, Lord, for total obedience. I need grace, Lord, for total for complete obedience. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I need grace. Release your grace upon my life to obey you, to obey you completely. Lord, you won't regret that you have lifted me. Lord, you won't regret that you have sustained my life. Lord, you won't regret that you put me in a position. Lord, you won't regret that you gave me a family. Lord, you won't regret because I need grace, Lord. Tonight, I need grace to obey you. I need grace to obey you. Lord, give me a willing heart to obey your word. A willing heart. He said that we are unwilling to carry out the instruction. Ask God, give me a willing heart. I need a willing heart. A willing heart. A willing heart to obey your word. I need a willing heart to obey your words without questioning you. Lord, without making excuses. Without reservation. A willing heart. A heart that is devoted. A willing heart to obey you in the things that you have asked me to do. A willing heart. I need a willing heart, Lord. I need a willing heart to obey you, to surrender myself without reservation, not to question you, not to question you, not to make excuses, Lord, but a willing heart to obey you. A willing heart to obey you. A willing heart to obey you. I will not engage in selective obedience. The Lord, complete obedience. I receive grace tonight in the precious name of Jesus Christ. As you obey God this year, as you align with the instructions coming from this altar, with the instructions that God gives to you, I see your full restoration happening before you know it in the precious name of Jesus. The word of the Lord will be fulfilled in your life and in your direction in Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands as we celebrate God for his word into our life. Father, we give glory. Celebrate Jesus. Praise God. We can take our seat. We give glory to God. I know God is blessing you in Jesus' mighty name. It's time for us to worship God with our tithe and offering. This is an opportunity for us to be obedient to what the word of God says. Tithes is 10% of any income we have received. And our offering is us appreciating God for his goodness over our life. And we can do that through Zelle. You can send it, just go into your bank app and you can send it to give at dominionlife.org. That is the easiest way for you to pay your tithes and your offering. Also, we can do it by texting. And you can sow that seed by texting GIVE to 925-275-1600 and just follow the prompt. Praise Jesus. And as we saw our seed, the word of God says in Psalm 24, 1, it says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. This scripture in itself should give us the confidence to always want to obey God. Because God owns everything. And if God owns everything, he's the one that provided that seed. And if you sow that seed, he says he can use any means. So God can bless you beyond your salary. God can bless you beyond what you know because he owns everything. Our expectation should be beyond our job. And I know God is going to bless us this year in Jesus' mighty name. If you've written those seeds and if you've sown it, please lift them up to God and just begin to appreciate God for what he has given him. Begin to appreciate God for the opportunity to sow that seed. Father, we thank you this evening. We thank you for the opportunity to bring our seed to you, Lord. As we sow it, we thank you, Father, because we have acted in obedience. We thank you for the abundance that is coming our way. We thank you, Father, that we will not lie in anything in Jesus mighty name as you have done that as you have been obedient you will not lack in anything in Jesus mighty name 
praise Jesus. Please, let's give our attention to the following announcements. Please be reminded, we continue in our corporate prayer and fasting tomorrow. And we're going to end it with our night of miracle and anointing service, which is tomorrow and the time is at 9 p.m. Please join us. I know it's going to be a blessing and God is going to do mighty things in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Also, we want to remind you, please continue to send your testimonies. We know God is doing mighty things in our life. And now you can text your testimony to the number 925-364-1745. This is in addition to sending the email, so you can use either. And the email address is echurch at dominionlife.org. Also, for your convenience, you can actually also send a recorded video of your testimony. But please make sure it's just one minute. It cannot be more than one minute. Praise Jesus. We want to remind you that our Stockton and Brentwood Church continue to have their Wednesday midweek service, which is on Zoom. Praise Jesus. Also, on February 27th, at 10 a.m. Saturday, the men of Dominion will present the role of a father. And this is raising godly children in a contemporary society. This is this Saturday. I know the invitation has been sent out. Please note this is a virtual event. And the link or the Zoom information is on that information. Please use this to invite and please remind all the men in your household they want to be part of this. I know there's going to be some revelation coming out of this in Jesus' mighty name. Again, this is on February 27, and the time is at 10 a.m. We also want to remind you that our Dominion Celebration Service is on Sunday at 10 a.m. Praise Jesus. I know we've been blessed. We're going to be closing our, this service. Wherever you are, please stand on your feet and begin to appreciate God. Begin to lift up your voice for what he has done, for the word that has come to you this evening, for the revelation that has come to us. Father, we thank you. Just lift up your voice and begin to ask God again, Father, I want to be obedient to the T. I want to fulfill your word. I want to align myself with what you are saying. I want to comply. Father, I thank you for the grace that you have given me to do this. I thank you, Lord, that I will fully comply in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give glory to you. Let's share the goodness together. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Be blessed and have peace. We'll see you tomorrow at 9 p.m. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today for service. I know that you have been tremendously blessed. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Join us as we continue to stream the word of God into your homes on all our social media platforms. God bless you and see you next time.